In this video, I want to talk about how you can go about estimating the unobserved heterogeneity. So let's say we have our original equation. So we say that we're interested in finding out the effect of crime and unemployment in a given city at a time t on the level of house prices in that particular city at a time t. And as we spoke about before, there is going to be some sort of unobserved heterogeneity term, alpha i, which is a, a factor which is constant through time but varies across city. And we've also got our idiosyncratic error, uit. And let's say in this particular question, or this particular question we're interested in answering, is how do we estimate this value of the unobserved heterogeneity? So what does that actually mean to estimate the unobserved heterogeneity? Well, what we're kind of doing is we're kind of hoping to see what is the effect of all these unobserved factors on average um, across the different cities. So how does it vary across the different cities? So one of the ways we could go about estimating this alpha i is to just use least squares dummy variables, which is just including a dummy variable for each of the different cities. So here, our estimated equation will just be house price in city i at time t is equal to beta 1 times the crime rate in city i at time t plus beta 2 times the unemployment rate in city i at times t. And then what we're going to do is we're going to include explicitly dummy variables for n minus 1 of the cities. We, we only need to do it for n minus 1 of the cities because if we were to include it for n cities, we would have issues of perfect collinearity. So the idea is here we include a dummy for city 2, we include a, another dummy for city 3, and we continue for the entirety of our cross-section. Um, and then finally we just have our idiosyncratic error, UIT. And the least squares estimates of, well, estimates u1 or, or mu2 here will turn out to be unbiased estimates of this unobserved heterogeneity. So that's, that's one way of estimating the unobserved heterogeneity across cities. Another way is to use fixed effects estimation. Well, how can we use fixed effects estimation? Because remember, what we have in fixed effects estimation is that we have that the time demeaned house price in city i at time t, so that's house price tilde i t, is equal to beta 1 times the crime rate, which has been time demeaned, plus beta 2 times the unemployment rate, which has itself been time demeaned, plus finally we've got this time demeaned idiosyncratic error. And notice that, as we sort of proved before, fixed effects estimation has explicitly removed the alpha term here. And that was the real, really the whole point of fixed effects estimation. So how can we hope to estimate this parameter alpha i if we don't even have it included in our model? Well, it turns out that all is not lost because what we can do is we can take our estimated values, which least Paul pulled OLS gives us on this transform system. So that's beta 1 hat star and beta 2 hat star. And we can use them to help us to produce our estimates of alpha i. So it turns out that an estimator of alpha i is just to take the time mean of house prices in each city and then take off beta 1 star times the average crime rate across time in that particular city minus beta 2 hat star. So those hat star here means it's the estimate, the point estimate, which has been outputted by least squares on the fixed effect system, uh, times finally the time averaged unemployment rate. So essentially what we're doing is we calculate alpha i hat for each of the different cities and it turns out that this alpha i, just like these uh, least squares estimates of mu1 and mu2, is also unbiased. 
So in both circumstances here, we have that the expectation of this alpha i hat, or in the case here, mu1 hat or mu2 hat, is equal to alpha i. So that's a great thing if we have strict exogeneity being assumed uh, along with a range of other conditions. But there is a particular problem with these estimates of the unobserved heterogeneity. And it's quite a rare one because even though we have that these estimates are unbiased, it can still turn out that they are inconsistent. So how could that possibly be? Well, here explicitly I'm talking about the situation where t here is fixed and we're letting n tend to infinity. Well, what, what's the reason that we might have inconsistency even though we have an unbiased estimator? Well, the reason is, is that although our sample size is increasing as n tends to infinity, every time we add a new cross-section or a new sort of um, city in this example, that means we have to, in the dummy variables estimate case, include another dummy variable. In the fixed effects estimates case, we just have to run another one of this sort of second stage here. So actually by including a higher number of cities, we are just making the problem bigger for ourselves. So we're not actually getting any more information through adding more cities to our sample. So even though our estimator is unbiased, and in fact it's asymptotically unbiased, it's inconsistent because even though our sample size has increased, the variance of our estimator doesn't tend to zero as the sample size tends to infinity, or in, in technically as n tends to infinity. If it was the case that we had t going to infinity, it would be a different situation. But in the circumstance where we have n going to infinity, we have to be careful because our estimator is unbiased, but it is inconsistent. So what might be the purpose of estimating this unobserved heterogeneity term here? Well, essentially what you're trying to do is we're trying to ascertain the sort of average effect of all the time constant factors which are contained in this alpha i term here. So we're trying to evaluate how, for example, demographics might have an impact house prices across city, uh, across different cities rather. We might be interested in how the sort of city's average level of education might be impacting house prices. And we're looking at the sum or the average of each of these different effects in the different cities. So that might be a reason we want to estimate alpha i. Although I should say that estimating alpha i is normally a very subsidiary thing to do. And to be honest with you, a much more interesting thing is estimating the parameters beta 1 and beta 2. Since typically in panel analysis, we're looking at some impact of some sort of policy, which has changed over time. So typically we're much more interested in beta 1 and beta 2.